Video games have always been pretty weird, but the last few years have seen games really embrace that old-school surrealism and push it to new heights. Octopus City Blues, a game about a frozen world in which the last humans inexplicably live on a giant octopus, is a fine example of this style. Octopus City Blues follows the misadventures of Calf Kafkarian, an ordinary man, relatively speaking, with a boring job and a weird relationship with beetles. Over the course of the game, Calf is pulled into a conspiracy at the heart of his world and must find a way to untangle it. What follows is an adventure game with some light RPG elements and multiple paths and endings, all enhanced with creepy, unreal visuals which really push the limits of what pixel art can do. You are an Ashtar, a mystic endowed with the ability to move across the seasons and interact with the realm of spirits. For some time, you have been on the trail of a fugitive, finally placing him in an isolated village. But the village is strange. All of the people are missing, yet the hearths are full of ash as though they've just been used. Using your power over time, you must glean the stories of the villagers and find out how their fates connect to the one you are pursuing. Time is a key element in the end of the sun. The Ashtar can travel between four periods of time, each one thematically linked to a traditional Slavic festival. Being in certain places at certain times will reveal parts of the story, but there's no mandatory sequence and everything is non-linear. Players can walk through the plot in their own fashion and how they explore the story will influence its outcome. Visually, The End of the Sun is meant to capture the feel of a Slavic village in meticulous detail. The developers say they've studied and scanned hundreds of actual artifacts. Combined with the depiction of traditional cultural and day-to-day -day activities, this could be an extraordinarily realistic experience. You are the first robot to work in a newsroom, tasked with reporting for the most prestigious holographic newspaper in the galaxy. Don't get too excited though, you're starting at the bottom, so forget about covering politics or war. Instead, you're on the hyper-local beat, churning out human interest stories about things that aren't exactly scintillating. If you want to get ahead, you'll need to find a way to make these tiny little stories seem captivating. Times and Galaxy has the look of an adventure game, but there aren't any conventional puzzles. Rather, the player is tasked with reporting on various events around the galaxy, product launches, cultural happenings, and other space fillers. While on the scene, the player needs to cultivate relationships with sources and investigate anything that might be noteworthy. Once the investigation is done, the writing phase begins. Depending on what the player saw, there are different options to compose the article from the headline to the nut graph. This can result in an article that's perfectly honest, technically accurate but sensationalized, or flat out full of lies. Each option has long-term consequences for the paper. Sensationalism draws eyeballs, but it can also degrade the paper's trustworthiness over time. With a dev team that includes people with actual journalistic experience, Times and Galaxy should present the player with a true-to-life, albeit fantastic, model of the modern media environment. Shadowgate is one of the essential graphical adventure games. First released on the Macintosh line in 1987, the game has since been ported to many systems and given numerous enhancements, most recently in 2014. However, there's been little in the way of sequels, only one on the Turo Graphics CD in 1993 and one on the N64 in 1999, both of which have been almost entirely forgotten. Now Zojoy, a company founded by Shadowgate's original creators, are planning to finally develop the full sequel that they never had a chance to make. Set 35 years after the events of the original game, the story begins in a prison cell inhabited by the Finling Del Thornborough. Escaping from his cell, Del finds himself caught up in an adventure to once again stop the looming darkness dwelling beneath the land of Kal Torlin. It definitely has some similarities to the little-remembered Shadowgate 64, but the whole experience is looking to be far more ambitious. Unlike the remake, Beyond Shadowgate maintains the look and feel of the NES version of the original game, but features five times the rooms. The scale is far grander than any Shadowgate game before this, including 180 death scenes, always a draw in an old-school adventure game, and several optional branches referencing other ICOM and Zojoy games, such as Deja Vu and The Uninvited.